Well, we had some problems with the audio of Adriana, so we have to make up for this. And here we go. Um, in the previous video, we didn't talk too much about learning styles and related to MBTI personality types. So in this video, we, we will discuss about it. And I had some some questions that ha has been had been in my mind when reading about it. For example, what happens if there is a person that prefers to to work on schedules, but also has a desire or flexibility and how how can this person get encouraged or motivated if there is this conflict in in the preferences that that um, he or she has that is something I, I was I was wondering what conclusions did you get to um I think there must be this thing a balance a balance between those those desires and their contradictory desires um, um, maybe to as a teacher to encourage them to have a schedule, but not, I mean, to have a schedule, but also letting them to be creative or not to, to be like really restrictive about following the schedule, I was thinking. Then, there there uh there is another question i had about these these mbti personalities <clears throat> and learning styles uh, that it is it is more more related to for example when a student likes scientific theories but also um, tends to um, tends to understand or to learn things more in a practical way maybe his or her personality is um, I, I won't say introvert but some someone that likes science that he, it is not a practical field but the way this person this student learns is in a practical way like being part of that being active and looking at that um new knowledge or maybe um being part of the knowledge in a more practical way like in a real life way uh, yeah i don't know how how we as teachers can can make it easier for this student to balance that how can we guide this student i I don't know how to, but that is something I, I was guessing. I was questioning about learning styles and MBTI personality types. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Do you uh, have what? any idea, Sergio? I was, about... wondering, why, I was wondering why. What stopped you from from getting to a conclusion there? Um, 
the, it seems to be a, a contra like a contradiction maybe for you to like science but you cannot make it practical because it is about theories and how can you practice that theories uh, that's why I, I i can't um i don't find the the point where both of them mix or have something in common i i don't i don't but, but you are you talking about a person who learns theories but what what separates this person from the practical applications? I don't understand. Oh, maybe this person likes science and wants to um, practice that science because that is the way this person learns better. Because it is not enough for the learner to just read. Maybe this person likes science, but reading is not enough for his or her learning. Do you get me? So you say he likes science yeah. and he learns by yes. touching, by sensing uh, physical stuff? Yeah. yeah okay, I, uh, well, there's no contradiction in reality. Uh, one can learn science uh, by practical application. Uh, some um, th there are two kinds of scientists. Uh, some of them are more into practical sciences, uh, like experimental, like an experimental physicist, and others can be more theoretical. So they can be theoretical physicists. So uh, and these ones, they try to recreate new models which can explain how the world works um, and the um, experimental physicists uh, show how these ideas can be applied to the real world so i don't see any conflict here maybe Maybe these guys who who are more related to practical applications will have will take more time learning the theoretical um, axioms or theories that have been already proposed. But I I don't think they are not going to be able to understand them. Maybe they will take longer uh, maybe yeah, they will need some help but that is when cooperation and co-working get importance because he this person who is more familiar with practical applications will be helped by a theoretical physicist and he's i'm pretty sure he will understand the topic um so probably they need dialogue and cooperation to balance if oh you we... mean you mean for them to work together maybe someone that yeah. Yeah. can understand complex theories but yeah. cannot apply them and yeah. a person think... that can apply the the theory but doesn't get really yeah yeah, I, I don't think that one cannot do the other uh, stuff, but I think that they will have different um, different uh, levels of energy used. Mm. Theory and, they have um, different abilities. Yeah, yeah, because it will it will be more energy consuming for the guy who is not uh, familiar with practical applications. If he wants to uh, build something that has a real application, 
I mean, like, um, it's not it's not the same to 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 explain how gravity works at the moon than than designing a and designing a spaceship who and the spaceship that can work correctly there. It requires different abilities. So and we have we are more familiar with some some tools and some ideas. And that's the complexity of talking about how two people learn. Everyone has different um, ways of thinking. So I think that's okay. that's the that's how we can go deeper and deeper on this topic. Um, it would be endlessly. So, but what if what if someone wants to be an autonomous? Well, it's he's have he will have to um, put some I mean, hard work on it. He will have to put some hard work on it. And it's not going to be possible in this world because uh, all phenomena, phenomena are interdisciplinary, and there, there, are, there is so much knowledge. Um, there is that much, so we cannot work alone on on science. Um, we need a physicist. We need a chemist. We need a biologist. We need a computer scientist. Um, that is only in the sciences. On the other, um, on the other topics, I don't know. But we always need a team when we want to learn something really complex. Uh, to be autonomous. I mean, it could work, but you will take longer, and you would, and you will need more energy. Um, well, that's true. I don't, I don't think that's the smartest option. I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, in fact, so try to be autonomous, unless you consider it yourself a genius. Even there, geniuses have never worked alone all their lives so um, at some point they needed some help yeah maybe <clears throat> maybe that's true i think so but <clears throat> In something really, really small, like if someone wants to um, have a balance just for doing a small task, um, how could we help this person? Or do you think it is the same that needs to, to, to work in groups? Because it is kind of different, like to work in a big project and work in a small task. Give me an example, just to give you a better answer. Okay. Um, we're talking now, now we're talking about practical application and theoretical understanding. Then an example of that could be um, maybe someone trying to learn about affectivities or maybe learning about affectivities, but trying to practice that theory you learn it might not be easy or yeah easy to do like to to um, to have some action might not be easy 
and affectivities is like a topic of relationships um something that happens to everyone and is really common mm. yeah do, do you need more more specific maybe you can ask me some questions so that i can create a scenario uh, with affectivities do you mean feelings emotions impressions and what i mean is uh relationships relationships uh, but with like friendship um maybe uh, yeah that, that that kind of relationships friendship love i, I don't know how to say this um interpersonal relationships like with everyone with with the person that you met at the um at the store with your boss with wow. your friends with your classmates if you have a lover with your lover well i, mean, that I think with that, activities. well i think that uh some topics can be taken easily by practical applications or by extracting knowledge from the real world and i think that affectivities is a uh, it's a great example for this uh, because you have to observe how people are interacting in the real world the emotions they feel, what they th say about these emotions, what they write about these emotions. And that that way we get the knowledge. And this knowledge becomes theoretical when we get some conclusions from tons of uh, practical observations. Um, so I think that well, that's that's how the knowledge gets uh, gathered. But how some do you you are asking me how do people learn about this? Right? No, uh, I am asking about <clears throat> a person that wants to be autonomous that maybe can understand the complexities of affectivities but maybe it's not so good at apply apply these this knowledge in the real world i got it i got it you mean he can know what love and friendship is but he doesn't know how to feel the love of someone else or to feel the concept of friendship of someone else that's to what behave, you mean. To behave rather than feeling, behaving. Um, that is a question I, I have. Well, Just, well, I think um, that I think that in these topics, um, learn the theoretical meaning is not so important because you have to these concepts are important when you apply them because when you apply them you create change if you know the concepts theoretically you you can talk and talk but you are not having the knowledge your gathering doesn't have a impact um, so I, I don't think there is so much uh, importance on learning this theoretically. It must be applied to say that you have learned something about affectivities at all. Um, and I am, I think it's important to say this because some people say they know about 
of activities, but they just know some concepts. Um, like that's yeah. that's not really knowing about them. Yes. I, just having a vague idea, a general idea about it, but it's not this no this is not a tip. Um, so I don't know if that's um, an important amount of um, no this it's just superficial. So that's what that's that's what I think. Uh, but if you if you have studied a lot of practical situations related to affectivities and you write a book, a theoretical book about it, uh, maybe it can be important. But otherwise, I don't think you can compare learning what love is to really love a person for a couple of years. I know I don't I don't know it's it's different. It's really different. But maybe writing a book about what love uh, is not only now but around all the history of the of the world. Maybe it can be something. Okay, that's what I think. Mm. Yeah, it's confusing. Really confusing. Um, I remember something that the teacher used to say in the class. That it was about that. Sometimes uh, you want to do something and you think about it. But um, it is something really easy. If you want to speak, if you want to be a master in speaking, you must speak just like that, acting. Maybe that is a way that we can help. Yes, I agree with you. Yeah, I think it, it, it has been a lot of uh, time and time to discuss. So maybe we can just uh, now end up our, our discussion. Is it OK? Yeah. Um, have you something to say to close this session? Mm, that we have to be creative to be able to mm, encourage our students, uh, even if there is a conflict in their M MBTI type personality and learning style. We have to be really creative, just that. Yeah, I think creativity, flexibility, structure, group work, independence, practical applications and theoretical understanding are important and must be balanced. Um, they're all important. We just have to know how to mix them up and how to um, be aware of their presence and their importance in every student we have. Um, yeah. So that's what I think. So thank you for this conversation. Yeah, thank you for this yeah so this was all from part two of our video good night